Good morning, and thank you for joining us for our service of worship for Holy Humor Sunday, April the 19th. My name is Bob Root, and I'm the Supply Minister at Trinity Providence Pastoral Charge until the end of June. And the 1st of July, the Reverend Andrew McPherson comes to join the family, and it's a great excitement, and we're looking forward to that very much. We're trying a new format this morning. We're uh, recording this service on Thursday uh, by Zoom from Meg's house up in Minden and from my house down in Peterborough. We found that the best uh, way we think so far to make the sound good is to have Meg uh, playing the piano at her house and coming through the phone lines. So we'll be interested to know and receive some feedback on what's been working for you. To begin with, I invite you just to kind of take a deep breath and uh, center yourself in the love of God and in the beauty of this day and this place, and listen as Meg plays the prelude. As we gather for worship, we acknowledge that we are on the traditional lands of the Michi, Sagi, and Anishinaabe people, who have been co-creators and caretakers of this land for since time immemorial, and we're grateful for the care that they have showed for this part of creation. We begin our service by lighting a candle. This is a candle that holds the light of this new day, the light of this Easter season, the light of Christ's love that lives deep within us. And normally when we're in the church building, we light a second candle as well, a candle for peace and reconciliation, especially with our indigenous sisters and brothers, but with all creation and with all places where there is hurt and pain. So we give thanks for the light that lives within us and our call to share the light everywhere. And we join in this traditional Easter affirmation. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Today is the second Sunday of Easter, and Easter is not one particular day, but it's a whole season. And every Sunday is supposed to be a little Easter, where resurrection is proclaimed and the triumph of love is held high. Today is Holy Humor Sunday, and golly, we sure need it this year. Life has been and still is, for many people, very challenging right now. And so Holy Humor Sunday comes just at the right time. The early church called the second Sunday of Easter, Bright Sunday, or the Easter Lamb. And so while we bring our cares and concerns to worship today as it is right to do, let us remember also to breathe deeply and to laugh and give thanks for those who show us God's gift of laughter. I have a friend who says there are only two conditions in life anyway, serious, but not hopeless, and hopeless, but not serious. So let's begin with a chuckle. A minister is walking down the street one day when he notices a small boy trying to use the doorbell on a house across the street. But the boy is very small, and the doorbell is too high for him to reach. After watching the boy's efforts for some time, the minister walks across the street up to the little fellow and rings the doorbell for him. Kneeling down next to the child, the minister rises, smiles, and says to him, Now, I've done that. Now what do we do? And the little boy says, We run. So friends, come and let us be with God who laughs and loves and lives in each of us. Our first hymn is that lovely hymn from Voices United, Give to Us Laughter. There are four verses, and the last verse just means chuckle out loud. Meg will play an introduction and then the verses for us.
Delightful. I hope you're chuckling. I invite you to share our opening prayer as you find it printed here on the screen. God, you delight in our laughter and receive it as an act of worship. Thank you for being with us today. Heal our hearts with laughter and love as we gather in the joy of the empty tomb. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And Meg is going to read scripture for us now. It's not these verses exactly, but it's the story, and she's going to read it as a story for us. Meg. The Bible is full of stories that contain humor. In fact, it is one of the first characteristics of God recorded in the Bible. We discover it in that odd story of Abraham and Sarah, which is referenced above. They were the couple who, in their retirement years, were gradually made aware that God had chosen them to begin a new nation. And so, at age 75, they headed off on a new adventure. It's a great model. It continued when, age 99, Abraham laughed at God's suggestion that he and his hitherto barren wife were going to become parents. Can you imagine anything more bizarre? No reprimand was given to Abraham for this doubting of divine purpose. Perhaps God did not hear the laughter because Abraham was bent low. Sarah, aged 89, did not get off so easily. She giggled as she eavesdropped from behind a tent flap. Her husband was entertaining angels in the garden, and she was cooking a meal. She overheard one of the celestial beings say that in a year he'd pay a return visit, by which time the elderly couple would have had a son. Sarah laughed, and who can blame her? God asks, why did you laugh? But nine months later, the smile was on the other side of her face. In fact, she named her son Isaac, a word which means laughter. God has made laughter for me, was Sarah's response to his birth. And it was a woman who saw laughter making as an attribute of God. Thank you, Meg. As I mentioned, the Sunday after Easter is Holy Humor Sunday. So this morning, we're going to have some holy humor. And I want to say as I begin that I know that these are challenging days with all that's going on in the world and all that's going on in our lives. Living is not easy for many, and it's certainly not for the faint of heart. All the more reason then that we join in fun when we have the opportunity. The origins of Holy Humor Sunday date back to the fourth century. Some of the early church giants, Augustine, Gregory of Nyssa, John of Chrysostom, said the church needed to celebrate, and the week after Easter tended to be a time of parties, of joy, and of good practical jokes. The reason is that these early church theologians said that God played the ultimate trick on Satan by raising Jesus from the dead. They called it Bright Sunday, or the Easter laugh. That's our invitation to spend some time today in this way. The Bible's full of humorous events and moments. At the Affirming Ministry Education Lunch and Learn last month, was it only last month or was it five years ago, one of the statements that found unanimous agreement was we take the Bible seriously, but not literally. We take the Bible seriously, but not literally. And we do, and I'm so grateful for that. But sometimes we take the Bible so seriously that we don't allow ourselves to see the humor that it contains. For instance, that story that Meg just told us about, Abraham and Sarah. I mean, really, 90 and 89? How many of you want to start a family at that time in your life? And if you do, please let me know and we'll start to organize the baptism. I mean, you may be up several times a night anyway, but not to look after an infant. God has a great sense of humor and can address every situation with a twinkle in God's eye. Sometimes we forget to look for it. Today is an invitation to watch all of these for the sound of God's chuckling. 
There's an old saying that says, if you want to hear the sound of holy laughter, try telling God your plans. And so it goes. As well, so much of the humor in the Bible is culturally bound, as we would expect it to be. These were stories written down in their time and context, a context that we may not always understand. So sometimes we miss the humor that the first hearers would have understood. Let me share two stories where we might have a chuckle. The first time is the time that Jesus says it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to get into heaven. That is, of course, an obvious exaggeration on Jesus' part. But biblical scholars suggest there may be two less evident ambiguities in the story. The first is that it might not be a camel. It might be a rope. The Greek words that have been translated for us are only one letter apart. Maybe it was a simple spelling mistake. That in itself would be funny. Others have suggested there was an arch in Jerusalem called the needle's eye, through which a camel could squeeze only with considerable indignity. So imagine it, either way, it's kind of funny. The second one to look at with a twinkle in your eye, and there are others as well, is the story that Jesus told that begins, suppose one of you has a friend who comes to him in the middle of the night and says, friend, lend me three loaves because a friend of mine on a journey has turned up and I have nothing to offer him. The homeowner responds pretty grumpily. He says, don't bother me. The door is shut for the night. We're all in bed. I can't get up. On the face of it, it does sound pretty grumpy and heartless. But there's some background that helps us see the funnier possibilities. Houses in Palestine in Jesus' day were usually one large room in which everyone lived and a bed in which the whole family slept. In the story, it's nighttime, and the husband is in bed with his wife and all his children. She's perhaps sleeping at the outside so she can more easily breastfeed the baby. It's the middle of the night. It's pitch black. There's no electricity. There's no paraffin lamps. There's no battery-operated flashlights. As well, in the house, domestic animals, anything from dogs to hens, may be inside with them. And if there are thieves about, they probably brought the goats in as well. That's the scene. And then you hear the knock at the door. Just when Jesus' listeners begin to giggle at the thought of who or what a barefooted man might tramp on between his bed and the door, Jesus lets them see the trouble that God would go to if we knock at God's door. Point made with a smile. The suggested proof that God has a sense of humor is often self-referencing and self-deprecating. God must have a sense of humor after all. Look at me. People recount some odd or ridiculous situation in which they once found themselves, and they see evidence of the hand of heaven mocking them. I think we're being hard on ourselves. We are, after all, made of the essence of God, filled with goodness, laughter, love, and light. And what about what I call naughty laughter? You know the kind where you find yourself giggling and you can't stop? but you know you should, you just can't. Some years ago when I was at Mark Street Church in the summer, we had guest soloists like you do at Trinity and Providence. Well, this particular Sunday, the guest soloist was someone who at one time had been a concert whistler. I never even knew there was such a thing, but there was and our guest was one and very accomplished, very, very good. The piece being whistled was a lovely piece called In a Monastery Garden. I happened to catch somebody's eye in the congregation who had been, whose funny bone had been struck by this whistler. And she was having a naughty laugh 
It struck her funny. She was shaking, you know, the way you shake and you laugh and you try not to laugh. And I caught it. You see, the soloist was standing just in front of me and I got the side view. It may be enough for me to say that there are a lot of moving parts in a person's body needed to whistle with that. Now, we know, though, the healing benefits of laughter, and I think your new minister, Andrew McPherson, has a good sense of humor, and that's a good fit for you. So let's breathe easy and have a couple of, a couple of smiles now. A church sign outside the Maplewood Christian Church in Montana announced, if you must sleep in on Sunday, sleep in here. Sleeping bags on the back pews invited some people to reserve a few minutes for naps during the service. We've even got some uh, seasonal COVID-19 chuckles, like this one for Good Friday. The Last Supper, I don't care who your old man is, this gathering is illegal. And this one for Easter Sunday morning. Jesus coming out of the tomb, the police there with their mask on, social distancing saying, don't even think about it. But my favorite one is this, sent by my friend Phil Hobbs. It's Kingsway Baptist Church. It says, no toilet paper? Guess the roll was called up yonder. It's good to have a sense of humor. Carrie Perry is the minister at the Lakefield Young's Point Pastoral Charge. Carrie's in the finishing stages of a Doctor of Ministry degree in the area of playful approaches to God and liturgy. In other words, how can we make our relationship with God more playful? I'm taking part along with several others in her research and she asks some good questions. As a child, what brought you joy? As a child, what brought you joy? Was it reading comic books or playing with friends or being by yourself? I had a sandbox and I used to like to wet the sand in the sandbox and then get a box of firecrackers at the five and dime store and blast tunnels through the wet sand. What brought you joy? What are the messages that you've received about playing? Some of us grew up hearing that playing was an essential part of what it meant to be alive and play as much as you can. Others heard that playing was a silly waste of time and don't do that. Others heard that playing is something you can do after you get all your work done. What messages did you receive? Search your memory for some of those times in your life when you were at your very best. And I'm guessing there was some play and laughter and joy involved in those moments. Are any of those moments recent? I was delighted the other day to be sitting on top of an upside down canoe in a trailer behind a van so I could go canoeing with a friend at a safe social distance. I laughed out loud all the way down the road and it was great. Author Benet Brown talks about finding spaces for play and laughter. Brown says that goofing off is good for us. It sparks our creativity. And then Brown offers three suggestions that might help us goof off in a good way. The first one is create a playlist. If you were to stop and think about it, what three activities would you write down on a list? that you could do for hours on end. What are the first three things that jump into your mind? The second one is, now carve out time to do it in your calendar. Even in these days of isolation, when people think we've got all the time in the world, schedule some unstructured time in. Leave room for spirit to tickle your fancy. And the third thing, is play well with others. It's fun to be content in your own company, and it's good to be laughing with family or friends. You can do this even when you're isolated, thanks to the wonders of technology, including that old-fashioned one called the telephone. Contact your friends, giggle together, make happy plans for the days ahead. 
Friends, I think God loves the sound of our laughter. And I know it's good for us to laugh. And I hope that even in these days, and perhaps especially in these days, that you are knowing that laughter from deep within that bubbles over into all your living. Thanks be. Amen. I'm going to share with you a prayer this morning from a church in Ottawa called Trinity United Church. My daughter, Jessica Noyle, works there part-time as a congregational designated minister. And she and her youth group had a virtual meeting recently to talk about Good Friday and Easter. And they put together these ideas that have been written into a prayer for, for Easter Sunday. And this is the second Sunday of Easter. So I invite you to join your hearts and minds with me as I offer these words. Creator God, we come to you full of confusion, awe, gratitude, and joy on this Easter day. So much is in our hearts and on our minds. We know that Jesus had died, but when the women went to the tomb, he was not there. How can this be? We're hearing stories of people all over the world dying from a rampant virus, and yet we are told to have hope. How are we to wrap our minds around this, dear Lord? We hear the Easter story of the Holy Spirit appearing and remember your promise that you are with us always. And we see this promise being fulfilled. With all the turmoil the world is experiencing right now, somehow we are still able to find joy and excitement. Our gardens are springing to life and there are the sweeter things in life to enjoy like a basket of chocolate Easter eggs or marshmallow chicks. Our concerns do not leave us, but are tucked away for a while so we can experience these things. We are grateful for so much, Holy One. Technology allows us to connect with one another even when we can't be physically close. The warmth of the sun, food, family and friends, healthcare, frontline workers, secure homes, tireless leadership in these days of uncertainty, and especially for the love of your son, Jesus, who showed us in life as he does in death, the way you would have us live in your world. We have been through the challenges of Holy Week, and we continue to walk through the challenges of this pandemic, but we know that you walk with us and that there is hope. Help us to be empathetic, to follow the advice of our leaders, to reach out for help and to be there for those who are reaching out to us. Help us to lead with love and kindness and to work together for the good of your world. For all these things and more, we give you thanks. Alleluia. Amen. And now, as Jesus, who taught us that God loves us like a mother, invites us to pray when we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So in these days when we're not able to gather together in a building, we're still able to make an offering. We make the offering of our lives to each other and we support each other the best way we can to support the ongoing work of the church and the wider work of the church in the world you can still mail in your offering envelopes to the church and they'll be welcome. You can go on our website, www.trinityprovidence.com and you'll see the Donate Now button through Canada Helps. Canada Helps does this uh, and keeps 4% of whatever you donate. The third option is one that was just set up this week for us, thanks to the good work of Doug Pepper, and that's for e-transfers. And if you go on the website, you'll be able to see the instructions of how to do that or call the church office at 705-738-5135.
So now your offering will be received, and Meg is going to play a verse of a hymn for us, and then we'll go into our song of dedication. Meg. Let us pray the prayer of dedication together. God of laughter and light, you invite us to share with delight the gifts you have so generously given to us. Accept our offerings, we pray, that others may know your goodness and all creation will praise your name. Amen. Our closing hymn today is a reminder to us that laughter has another purpose. Laughter and song can help us look something fearful right in the eye and respond to it with faith. As we so well know, coronavirus has hit our community and our own congregation very hard. And our own Walter Murray, Trinity's Poet Laureate, has written a hymn to a familiar tune, a tune that itself will bring a smile to us. And he's written words that will touch the heart, it will be our closing hymn. In the hymn, Walter refers to Pinecrest's Lorraine, and that is our own Lorraine Button, who knits mitts for our mitten tree. A couple of weeks ago, Lorraine was very ill, and we were concerned for her. But she is now recovering, and she's knitting blankets for new residents who will be coming to live in Pinecrest. It is, to me, a resurrection story. So Meg will play the introduction and then we'll join in the verses of this wonderful song.
Isn't that an amazing song? What a gift it is to us in our congregation and to our whole community. We are blessed to have. Friends, as we get ready to go, we reaffirm these words. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And now may God, whose laughter lit the stars, brighten your path in all the places life calls you to be. May you meet every challenge with the confidence that God loves your laughter and with the joy of sharing your laughter with everyone you meet. And may the blessing of God, whose eyes twinkle in delight at your living, the blessing of Jesus, whose journey brings us joy, and the blessing of spirit, who stirs laughter within us, be with us this day and this night and always. Amen. Our going out music is Christ is Risen from the Dead. And if you've had some fun this morning, I want you to do something really brave and stretching because I'm going to. I'm going to invite you to do you be really silly. Meg is going to play this through for us three times. And I want you to get up the second and third time and dance and sing with it. So please join in Christ is Risen from the Dead. Thanks for dancing with us, friends, and may you dance in your hearts all week long. Many blessings. Meg's going to play a postlude, and our time together will be over. <laughs>